Oh, he's getting it now. Metal Customs. Today we're back on the 77 Toyota Celica GT. Uh, in the first video we done the outer rocker panel, done some patchwork on the inners and a little bit on some floorboard pieces. I will uh, run through that right quick here in a minute and catch you up on that. And also there's a link below in the description box for this first video if you want to see how we've done all of that. On this video, uh, I'm hoping to be able to get out and get some metal because we've got to do the lower part of the quarters. I'll show you that here in a second as well. And we're going to start on the uh, strut tower pieces. So let me bring you in here and show you what we have done right quick and show you what we're fixing to do. All right. Yeah, we got them rockers in there. And see what I mean? We have to make this quarter panel right here. That's where I gotta go to town and get some metal. Uh, it's warming up this week. Our road's still a solid sheet of ice. I'm hoping to get out maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. Uh, we'll see. But yeah, I got all of that done. Had to fix some stuff in here. Got that spot fixed there. The uh, gas pedal. Uh, some little spots there. As you can see over here. Had to get that spot there. That outer's on. Had to replace part of the inner on the passenger side over there and get that all fixed up. But yeah, that all turned out pretty good and I'm happy with it. Uh, we're waiting on our seam sealer. That's how come you don't see a bunch of primer sprayed on a bunch of these spots and things right now. I want to get it, uh, I'm going to clean it up and then get our seam sealer in. There again, the weather has postponed uh, anything that I ordered from getting here. But as soon as the seam sealer comes in, I'll show you how we do that. We'll get that sealed up, as well as this spot here, because we've got to get this seam sealed and primed, and then go underneath and do some of the uh, rubberized undercoating in that spot, because we have a exhaust shield that goes back under there. But I want to get it seam sealed, primed, and undercoated before I put that on. So now, with all that being said, I think the next thing we're going to tackle here is the strut tower. Yeah, it's just this outer frame piece that's bad. Uh, the fun part, there's a wiring harness run up through here. Yeah. Go get all that crap all out of there. That's going to be a, a whole lot of fun. Let you see the other side. Same way with it. Got a wiring harness running through it. We'll figure out how to get that out of there. Yeah, you can see she's all rusted down through there. Uh, we'll probably start on the uh, driver's side. I've already made a bar in here, as you can see. This will hold any of this stuff from wandering in or out and hold everything straight like it's supposed to be. I'm not that much worried about the weight pushing this up or dragging down. I think we're okay on that. We'll watch it close as we're working on it, but I think we'll be fine. Yeah, here's the other side that we got taken care of. Yeah, looking good. Alright, let me set the uh, camera back down and get this thing set up. And first thing I'm going to do try to get that wiring harness out so that we can get our death wheel in there and get the bad rusty stuff chopped out. We got the wiring harnesses out. That was a pain. Now what we're going to do before we go cut, uh, if you'll notice there is a hole here, a hole here with a thread in it, threaded hole and a hole. We need to put them back where they are. I've got no clue what the holes are for, but I know the threaded ones are the most dependent on so what I did, took me a piece of cardboard. Remember, cardboard is your friend. And we're going to start with 
That's it. Regular everyday pump. Let me find a uh, little bolt to go in there, and I'll show you how we'll make a template so that we can get this back on our new metal exactly how it's supposed to go. All right. That two right there to come off that uh, piece. Okay, so we're gonna get this first one in. which I hope it's still for us so we know where we're at. Now the next one. Okay. Yes guys, some of this is guesswork. Put it in there and water it around so I know. Okay, cool. The next one is right on this line of cardboard about right. Okay. Alright, that was good. Then our next one will be up here. Alright, then we're going to get this one right here. That way we'll have something to hold it in place. Alright. Now this is a perfect template. And a little arrow here. So I know this is the driver side. Alright, I'm going to run over to the passenger side right quick and uh, make one. I've got a piece of cardboard ready. And that will keep us going. Keep us straight and correct. Alright, both templates are made. And uh I'm mark, I'm gonna cut it here, here, where the blue line is, and basically that frame line right down through there. Uh, I'm believing that this is gonna be uh, a lot of fun. Guys, I like to cut with the blade, spinning that away away from me. The way if something happens, it'll go away from me instead of into it. Yeah, I throw sparks all over me, but I'll take that versus a blade if I can. didn't come up or distort or anything. That may look distorted, but that was just a punk cut. Yeah, this is not going to be oh so terrible. Well, cool, guys.
Just gonna sit there for a minute. I'm gonna go eat lunch and I'll be right back. Alright, back from lunch break. I took the wire brush and hit all this real quick. And I'm gonna have made me a plate. Yes, good thick metal right there. Remember this is a double plate thing. We're gonna do this one, then the one coming off of here, like that. This one fits in there pretty good. Yeah. Gonna have to roll down some edges with the hammer with the sharp welding on But what I wanted to do before I got all of this boxed up and not see it again. Good enough. I got some of this uh, weld through primer, guys. This stuff is great. I mean, it help protect that down in there. Keep it from prematurely rusting. And like I say, this is the only time we're going to be able to really get in there and see it and do anything with it. So, we might as well. Up in there. There. Oh, I like it. We'll let that dry for a little bit. Then we'll go sharp welding this piece here in good enough that we can get our uh, top piece made. Alright, that piece fit in there really nice. I'm happy with that. And I know what some of y'all think. The piece I took out is all mashed in right there. I see no reason for that. I'm thinking that's just the way it was cast or pressed when it was made. Uh, something to do with the machinery or something. The fender does not uh, need the room or nothing else, so the fender will go right off. And this right here is actually a little bit, in my opinion, got a little bit more strength to it. And it looks a lot better. But, enough of that happened. We've got all of that done. Yeah, it didn't turn out too bad. And I've got somewhere, oh yeah, went ahead and made me one for each side, this stuff, that is some good thick metal, yeah man, and this should work out perfect for our piece that's going to go up into here, our extension of this here, then that's where we'll have our uh, holes and stuff in, well holes in both of them, but what I need to do first is grab the grinder, always got to be grinding, clean up all of this here, where this piece fit in there really nice, so let me go ahead and get that ground, and then get that fitted in, then we'll take our template, and throw it on there, we're not going to weld this one yet, we're just fitting it in, then we'll throw our template on there, and I'll show you how we'll get our stuff done. And it's simple enough, guys. I put my bow here, bow here, so I know which where it's supposed to be. I've got that other piece of metal up here. And it's pushed up against everything good and flat. So, just hold it there. Hold. Hold for the bolt. Hold for a bolt. And then just a hold. Templates work out really good. Now I know where I need to put these uh, holes at. I'm going to go ahead and drill these off camera. I'm sure y'all seen stuff being drilled before. And then we'll put it back up here. And I'll show you how we're going to go through this plate and get our nuts welded on this so that. He can put bolts in whenever he goes to put the fenders on. This way I line it back up exactly the same when I put it back on. There we go. I'm like a little extra measure. So, grab that other piece and get them whole sizes. But yeah, let me get these drilled out, and then we'll go to the next step. All right, now I'll form the holes drilled. Now, put it back up here exactly like it was. Now, I'm going to mark these. Okay, I'm 
get them drilled out. But we're going to drill these a lot bigger. I'll explain why here in a second. Alright, see how I drilled them out bigger? The reason I've done that, we've got to weld these nuts in here so they'll be able to bolt on the fender. Got me? Alright. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get that done. Then, we can put our top piece on and get it all welded in. Alright. Got them welded in there. Look pretty good, too. Now, what I'm going to do is take the little top plate here. Get it in place. Got to get a couple of clamps and whatnot on it. Alright, so I can just uh, put my bolts back in. Got to hold it where it needs to be. And uh, get this sewed up. And there we have it. Yeah, I just run a bead all the way around that one. Well, like usual, we've got a lot of grinding to do. But that's okay. That's part of the job. I'll get this ground down. It's the uh, end of the day today, so I'll come out here tomorrow, get this one ground, and uh, get some primer on it. That's a fact. And then uh, off camera, I'll do this other side over here. Now, the other side's going to be a little different, guys. But I figure y'all don't want to see me repeat two of the same things. Now, on this side here, of course, it's the same thing. Cut, cut, cut. I do just like I did the other side. Uh, under here is good. It's just this lip right here. So, I'm probably going to come in here and just chop up some of this lip and just put a new lip in there. Like I say, the fender is going to cover it. It's not a show car, so uh, that'll be just fine once everything's together. But I just feel like that lip ought to be cut out and repaired, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I'll come out here and get busy with it again tomorrow. All right, uh, my buddy Jimmy come by throwing me a hand. He got the fiberglass sanded down, so I've done as a uh, coat of Bondo on there. I had to take care of all the uh, bubbles that were left in the fiberglass and a lot of them big deep sanding marks got that and we got that right there yeah so i'm gonna let this cure overnight and maybe come out here tomorrow and uh block that out it should be pretty good uh yeah we got the doors bolted back on and uh, of course they fit but that was easy enough because they had done spray prime the car so that left me marks from my hinges yeah, that was easy to do. Like I say, everything's turning out really good in this little old car. We finally got our seam sealer in. So hopefully, I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow or Monday, but uh, I'll start that seam sealing and get the rest of this primed up. And also, uh, when I go out Sunday, I'm going to grab some metal. and we can get these uh, lower rockers done and get this project wrapped up. All right, guys. Jimmy come by and uh, sanded this down. It started with some 80 and then finished it up with some 400. You still see some sand and scratches. There's little nibs here and there. But we're going to take care of that. What we'll do, we'll take some of our icing and mix it up. we we'll get it on there. That will take care of them little problems. Same way with the back, you need like very little icing on the hatch, right? Very good. Yeah, the hatch piece turned out like almost perfect. But yeah, it's uh, getting around break time, so I think what I'll do, I'll mix up some icing, get it on there, then we'll take a break, and by the time we come back, hopefully the stuff will be dry. But then all you do after that is come in here and block sand it out with some 400. Should be perfect. Throw some primer on it. See what we got. All right, guys, I'm going to give you a quick one here on this seam sealer stuff. Well, I'm Cameron. Jimmy's going to show you how to do the seam sealer. First thing he's going to do is go in there and clean that stuff out. Alright, quick shot with their hose will get the job done. And like I say, he's got the... Uh, here's the seam sealer we're using, guys. He's already got one loaded, but I'll show y'all a new one. If I can get my hands on it. This is some high tech. This is this one's white, Jimmy, but it won't make a difference. 
Jimmy's got some black in there. This is stuff that we're using. And I'll show you how he does it. You see how he just run that bead right there? Then he's going to run one all the way across the floor as well. Let's see what that He's got a, just a little old Bondo spreader. And you take that Bondo spreader, get everything smoothed out. Now, see how nice that looks? And what he'll do, he'll get all these seams sealed up with that. Spread it with the Bondo spreader, get everything nice and smooth. We'll let this stuff dry until tomorrow sometime. And then we'll come in here with just some basic spray can primer and prime everything. See? As simple as can be, guys. Yeah, not rocket science. Just get your seam sealer in there really good. And I know a lot of people use their finger to run down through there. It's fantastic until that sharp piece of metal grabs you and there's not enough band-aids to fix it. So grab your Bondo Hello, spreader, man. piece of cardboard, whatever. Just keep your finger away from it. But that's it. I'll show you when it gets it all done. Oh, and I almost forgot. Yeah, we got that body work done on the door and primed it out. Yeah, that turned out really slick. Now, whoever paints this, be it me or somebody else, of course, they'll sand down that spray can primer and shoot some real high build primer out of a gun over it and block it. Then it'd be 150% perfect. And it did get that piece up there on the hatch as well. Uh, all these little dots, I want to contact the customer. They're all little dents or dings. We'll see if he wants us to fix them or if he does not want to nitpick that much. But we got the big part done and it turned out great. All right, guys. Got all the seam sealing done. Primer's on there. I need to get on the inside here and uh, prime all of that. But you can see how the seam sealer went on. I meant to leave it like that until y'all can see it. And also underneath the car, we have undercoating. Sprayed all in there where we put all that together. Except for right back here because I still got to do some welding there to make it a little rear quarter panels. But yeah, that's just mighty spiffy, ain't it? Oh, we even got this going. So we get that little heat shield back in there for the exhaust, which I mean it doesn't need it, but hey, it was there, so we put it back. So all right, guys. Now I've got me some metal. Yep, TSC metal. And it's time to make these bottom front quarter panels. All right, here is really all I got to work with to go by. We know the curve. So I got on the internet and I looked up some pictures. And the way this thing works, get y'all around here where you can see. It works to look like that. It comes out here. So it has a kick to it. It rolls right back down in here. Really hard. Because even though it stops here, it goes down and actually comes out. This line right here with that cool curve. So maybe that curve must roll in or something like that. Um, pictures on the internet to show a quarter panel for sale. It's really hard to see. It's just like back here, what connects all of this back here. It's got to be able to come down, go here, but it's got to be able to connect just straight to that. That might be an extra panel that we're going to make inside, like a filler panel, I'm assuming. But the big thing is to get this curve here first. But, we need to get a piece of metal cut. Now, we want... Yes. We want an inch width. So, we want an inch width. come out here. All of that would be 15 and 3 quarters. But I'm going to go ahead and cut it at uh, 16. 
Yeah, a little bit full with a blade. Got to stand there and think on it for a minute. But there's just a little left there. Let's cut it to 16 and a quarter. That way, we've got a little bit of flavor from the front side. But until I get to bend it and manipulate it, I don't know how it's going to roll down. So, go ahead and grab a piece of sheet metal here. And get us a measurement. We'll say we're going to 16 and 3 quarters. Well, not much of a line, is there? Maybe no blind man like me to see that. Alright, let me get this clamped up. And get a little death wheel in here and get that chopped off there. Alright, I got that chopped off there. Now, got to get this curved. A inch, inch and three quarters. Where I need to put that curve at. Helps it take top off. This one that is so close, it's gonna be really hard for me to hold that and get the curve in it at the same time. Let me uh, see what I can figure out. So I just chucked it up in my bender right here. I got this piece of pipe as you can see, and all I'll do is throw my fat butt on this piece of pipe to hold it down. It's up in the dust around that big spike. Let's see if that's enough. That ain't bad at all. Let's compare. Gosh, I'm not going to argue about that. Now, let me bend this down. Yeah, I get this precise measurement going on here. Right there. Well, at least I got this for uh, somewhat of a template. Okay, we want to bend this down. Oh, great. All right, it's exactly opposite what we need on there. Let's figure it out. 
Yeah, voila. There we go. All I did, guys, was take this pipe right here on my table. Set it down over here. I got this rubber hammer here. It's pretty soft. It's going to put a bunch of dents and stuff. I just started tapping as I moved it around and got it where I wanted it. So now, let's remember we've got one inch on this end here. It's got to be our fold around from the back. Tell you what, this uh, red sharpie doesn't like this metal much, but nothing mark I can see it. So that edge is going to have to be folded around. Uh, make a lift. Now, in doing that, we're going to be taking some of that bend out. So maybe it's a gradual bend up to there. Well, I'm not really sure. I say the pictures I looked at, they didn't show a whole lot. But we'll figure it out. Well now, we're fast forwarding a lot here. Done a lot off camera. You can see, got that piece made. Got it welded in there. My buddy Jimmy's been grinding on it. And yeah, there's going to be a little bit of filler involved. It's body work. I mean, you know, things like that. That's just part of it. But it did fit in there well. I do have to go in here. I don't know how well y'all can see it. Got to make a patch panel for in here. And get that taken care of. But yeah, that's no big deal. Uh, passenger side, I just got through. Welding all lit up. No grinding's been done yet. But yeah, it rolled right in there and looks really well. You see the way I do this guys, just put a little pie cut in here, roll that one over, you know, so we can get this lift here. I just leave it like that and weld it. Come near the grinder, dress her all down, she'll be fine. It's a time saver as far as cutting the metal and things. A lot of times you actually don't know, because you can push this forward or back. You don't know exactly where you need it, so in my opinion that's the way to go. This one, same as the other side. Got my little filler panel down in there. There is an extra piece of steel running through there for a little bit of reinforcement. But yeah, we're catching on with it and uh, it's going very well. Oh, go ahead. All right, guys. Uh, giving the grinder a break for a minute. We're trying to get some of these other spots. He said to go ahead and fix this. This. And this. That's what Jimmy's trying to do right now. And this rust spot over here. Go ahead and fix it as well. So I figure we give the old grinder a break. And that little bower, yeah, we'll probably melt it, but who knows. So Jimmy's trying to get something in there. And that's a hard spot to get to. I mean, there's open panels here. But getting something in there to where you can get it. We're going to try our best. We're going to get that thing beat out. And then we can use a little filler under there. But we want to beat it out as much as we can. So let's just see how it goes. Ah, Jimmy did get that beat out of there. Yeah, boy, that looks a ton better, don't it? We're going to hit it with the uh, grinder and a little bit of filler. And uh, that'll be fantastic. Now what I'm doing, guys, is working on these lips here. I'm trying to get all my metal work done, then I'll finish grinding, and then we can uh, start our filler work. I've already got this side over here. Yeah, that's done. And that right there, I mean, it looks like it's something complicated and all, but it really isn't. Uh, for those of y'all who would like to know how it's done, just uh, continue watching, and I'll show you how we make this side. Alright, so I'll grab this piece of metal like so. 
we already know that that lip is three quarters of an inch wide. So, let's come in here and mark that. Now, let's head over to the uh, bender. That was a 90 in that. Just like so. Now, come back over to the table. And we know that this is our actual lip. But it needs to come around some onto the quarter panel itself. So, I've already looked over there and I see about how much room we have. So, what we'll do is just come down through here and cut that because we don't need a whole lot on that outside part. Do that, we'll just chuck it up on a welding cut and do everything table. Well, I could get that uh, It just doesn't want to do right, does it? So I'll just pop it from this outer side. A little more trouble clapping it than I did working the face. There we go. Move this thing out of the way. Alright, let's grab our death wheel and chop that. Thing gets pretty sparky, I like putting on these big leather gloves. Did I? It's going to be one of them days, isn't it? Fantastic. Now you got to drop everything, throw everything around. Now we just have a small lift like we need. Now let's uh, take this over to the grinder. Get the big boy gloves off. And we're just going to clean up all of our edges that we just cut.
this in over the car with a marker. All right, we're gonna come in here like so. What I do is like a dot. Dot. A little bigger. A little bigger. This is gonna tell me how I want to do my pins. All right, back over here. Now we're gonna pull out the shrinker stretcher. And of course I have the shrinker one in here. And what I do, I start at the, uh, quote, the dot, the smallest one. And I'll just give it a little bit. A little bit. Now I'll start getting more aggressive with it. Aggressive, I mean, as far as the pressure I'm putting on it and how far I'm moving it. I'm not moving it that far. See, I'm barely moving that thing, if y'all can see good. Good crank. And just barely move it. And you just keep on like this with the shrinker die. Now I know this is not enough, but that gives y'all an idea of what we're doing. Let's take it over and see if we got the bend going correctly with our car. Okay, as you see, we've done way too much right there. We got way too aggressive with it. But that's okay, we can fix that. Yeah, that was my bad. I was paying too much attention to video than I was how I was doing it. As far as the take out, shrink or die. Well, there it go. We put in the stretcher. And what the stretcher's going to do for us, take some of that bend out of there, because we've got it all carried away, see? And it torqued. That happens. But I'm going to go over here and check it to see where we're at. Take some more out of it. Yeah, we're literally would not use this piece, but I'm going to continue with this just so I can show y'all how it's done. Alright, I just want to cut that top off. we we'll cut it a little more. But, for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and keep on with this one piece here. Uh, think about it, guys. When you bend too far and then you have to de-bend, you will break the metal. So, pay attention. Don't do like me and just get all carried away because you're making a video and not pay attention to what you need to be doing. Well, like I said, we'll finish this one. So we can get her all up in there. Let me see what that looks. Yeah, it's coming around pretty good. What you do, guys, like I say, take your time. Don't get carried away, bend too much, have to de-bend and get it busted. Just short pieces at a time, Come over to your vehicle and check it. Now, if we didn't mess up that top of that piece, then this one would have fit right in there. See, that's the perfect concave of that quarter panel. That's how you do it, and that's how you don't do it. Like I say, don't try to rush and get ahead of yourself. This is what you end up with. We gotta throw this away. But I'll go ahead and just make another one right quick so we'll have a good one for this side. But that shows you the do's and the don'ts how to make these type of lips here. I went ahead and remade one right quick. 
And this one fits and it has no tears in it. Basically, she'll just sit right up in there, just like so, and you know, like so. But yeah, that's how you make these little pieces. They're not that hard. Just pay attention, take your time, and you'll get them right. All right, well, off camera, I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up a little more and get this one all welded in. And there we have it. She welded right in there. Yeah, not too shabby. All right, so now we'll just uh, get it ground down, same way with everything else here, and then we'll start our body work, I do believe. Ooh, I need to hit that one right there, too. And that one underneath there. I need to get my sander on it, which I don't use a sander. Uh, I use this big drum thing right there. Yeah, that. You want to strip some paint off? Grab that thing. It'll do it. It'll do it quick. Save you a lot of time. But yeah, let me get a that stuff done and then we'll get to the uh, bodywork part, I do believe. Yeah, we're wrapping this thing up pretty good. There we have it. After you get it ground down, it should look like just one continuous piece of steel. What I like to do is the grinder so rough. No, no, yeah, this is really rough. But I like taking my little air sander here and going up. Just a little bit more until I got a couple of little shady little low spots with dark grays on it. But you want to give us a swipe of filler and a sand down, so that's perfect. But with that, we got a good weld, the piece fits properly, and it's going to work and turn out nice. So uh, let me keep running around the car here on the spots that I need to. Still got some more grinding to do. Looks like after I get the grinded, I like hitting everything with this. So, enough yapping, let's get back to working. All right, got everything cleaned up. We've got our glass laid on there. I think that's gonna turn out really well. Yeah, one coat of fiberglass would be plenty. Uh, it does good fitting and welding and grinding on that. So, I think once uh, this fiberglass sets and I get it sanded, uh, we'll see how it looks. I'm going to say a very light coat of Bondo and sand, take some icing over it. This should look like it was never even touched. But yeah, fiberglass went in good, so now it's just the uh, waiting game. Got to let this stuff sit and cure. Well now, we almost have this thing done. Uh, got that fiberglass sanded down real nice. Uh, coat of Bondo, uh, body filler. Uh, Y'all know I use that good 3M stuff. And got it all sanded. Now, last step is I got some icing on there. Basically, this is it. It's a polyester putty. It's like a, I don't know, a thin body filler. And it goes off really smooth, about like a cake icing. I think that's why they nicknamed it icing. And what this stuff does, it will fill in any of the little small air holes that you had in your filler and things like that. And since we sanded all the filler down with 80 grit, this will also fill up sanding scratches. And you'll probably see the sanding scratches in there if I get close enough and still enough. Which, this leaves a really, really nice finish. After this, we can go ahead and spray some primer on it. But, we don't use any air tools or anything like that on the icing. It's all blocks. I've got a couple different style blocks out here. These are getting a little bit into my contour. And then this main uh, old Mac block I got here. This thing's stiff, stiff as a board. But like having a two by four. But yeah, that'll do it. And like I say, we'll hand sand all of this. 
400, and I guess I'm going to roll as well. But let me get that all sanded down, and then uh, we'll clean it really well and get us a primer on there. And I uh, do believe we'll have this thing knocked out. Well, I do believe we're going to call this done. Yep, got all of that body work, spray primer on it. Oh, this turned out really well. Yeah, we even got that den under there. I just done a fast patch on it. Like you said, this is a going to be an everyday driver car. Don't put a bunch of time and a million dollars in it. But, y'all know me, this stuff that's really seen, I tried my best. I actually spent a little more time than what I should have, but I cut him a break on the label too, because I got to nitpicking on the bodywork on these panels that I made. And yeah, in my opinion, uh, whoever paints this car, which I'm going to try to get it, guys, I'm working for it. You know, you get a bunch of uh, primer laid on this thing to make good high build primer and block it out, and that'll perfect all of that little bit of body work. That's there. Which, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, the car turned out pretty good. I'm happy with it, and I'm sure when he shows up next week to check it out, he'll be happy with it as well. So, there you have it, guys. All the work we've done on the little Toyota Celica GT. Like I say, for the 77 model and for being up north, things in really good, good condition. Uh, looking forward to doing more on it. We'll just see how that goes. And yes, for those of y'all that have seen all the little pieces of green tape all over the place, I'm leaving them there for now because if we get to uh, finish this car and paint it, I'm going to ask if he wants us to get all the little bitty dents. He might, he might not. But we already know where they are, and we've got them marked, and I was going to leave them. Well, I'm going to take this car and uh, get it off the lift, but I'm not going to let it sit outside. It's going to be like a week before he's able to get here, and i got no problem with that. But I'll put it in the third bay. That way it won't get rained on, and people won't be fiddling with it, nothing like that. It'll be inside, safe and safe. But, thoroughly enjoyed it. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. Uh, I don't know. You may have actually learned something. If you did, that's cool. Uh, you know, good basic entertainment and trying to show people what I do with these vehicles. You know, that's what it's all about. And of course, the learning process, everything we do, we learn something. If we don't, well, then we just didn't do something correctly. And that's the way I see it. But guys, I do appreciate you watching. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know it was a little bit of a long one. But uh, it took some time to do this car. I think all of this I ended up with uh, about 73 hours in. Uh, yeah, it was time consuming. But it is what it is, and that's uh, the nature of the piece. Well, if y'all would, throw me down some comments. Tell me what you think about the little car and the work we've done on it. Um, if you're able, hit us up on Patreon and or the Super Thanks. That is very much appreciated and helps out more than you know. And please like, share, and subscribe. Let's get the numbers up on this channel. Uh, if you have any suggestions or anything like that to help that happen, throw it down in the comments. Always good to hear from people and hear what they got to say. Well, guys, thanks very much. Until the next one, we hope that everyone. Has a fantastic day.